I came here to uh, Denver in 1981 from uh, the United States Air Force, where I was stationed at Lowry Air Force Base. And uh, right after getting out of the uh, military, I joined the Arvada Police Department in 1983. And I served there for a couple of years, and during that time I had realized I wanted to go to a larger department, which I then applied for uh, Denver Police Department. So I got hired here in 1985. I worked uh, predominantly in the patrol division. Uh, I did a couple of little uh, stints over at the Traffic Operations Bureau, then located on Decatur Street, and uh, went back to my niche, which was um, out in patrol, worked a lot of the districts, Northeast Denver, uh, District 5, District 2, uh, ran the SCAT teams, uh, which then were called impact teams or community-oriented ori response teams. So that's where my roots were, uh, pursuing the uh, people in our community who are hell-bent on selling drugs and, and uh, using violence as a tool. So that's where I found uh, my niche in police work. As soon as uh, I hit my ninth year, I realized I wanted to do a little bit more and become a supervisor. So I started taking the test and was promoted to sergeant in 1994, on to lieutenant in 99. During that time, I went ahead and uh, served in the Internal Affairs Bureau and uh, also back at the uh, Traffic Operations Bureau as a shift commander there. I ran the Special Events Unit and garnered a lot of, lot of experience. I was called upon by the uh, Division Chief of Special Operations around 2000 to go out to DIA to help with some issues they were having out there and was actually there during 9-11, uh, which was an experience in itself. So uh, soon after that, I took the captain's exam and was promoted to captain in 2006 and was uh, given the game bureau as my first command. I stayed there for six and a half years. And uh, while there, uh, really focused in on how to eliminate uh, the issues that gangs cause in our great community and started to uh, sponsor a lot of partnerships with different groups in the city and really looked at the prevention and intervention side and really uh, immersed myself in that. It's something I realized early on in life. I did have, my granddad was a police officer back in Boston, um, but uh, it's just something as an innate calling, and uh, I believe in country, and I believe in community, and I'm very patriotic, and uh, I just felt that was my path, and that's what I chose to do, and, and uh, as soon as I turned 18, I could go in the military, I did that, and. The rest is history, so they say. I think police officers are part of a noble profession. And you find throughout our ranks there are many veterans and people who believe in, in this country. And it, it, it cascades down into community. And we really are peacekeepers. We, are, we really are people who care about other human beings and make sure that we don't have anarchy in our society go out and do the best job we can as professionals, and I believe in that. Yeah, very excited about going to District 2. My roots are in Northeast Denver. I've lived over here uh, in Park Hill. I've lived in Green Valley Ranch. Uh, I've lived in Montclair neighborhood. So I've, I've had a lot of experiences out in District 2, and I've worked here now. This is my third time, obviously the first being the commander. But what I enjoy about it the most is the diversity that it offers. And with Stapleton, uh, that being new from the last time I was here, I'm really excited about working with all the city council people in the district and the different community groups. Having been at the Gang Bureau, I've had access to most of those people, but I'm really looking at the opportunity to work with them one-on-one -on, -one on the issues and the quality of life, things that we can improve upon in the district. You know, when, when you work with uh, such a, a diverse group of people, and the different personalities at the uh, district, now roughly about 150 people, uh, you have to take into account everybody is an individual. So what I try to do is become a role model for them, set the vision out. Uh, obviously, I take my lead from Chief White and uh, the deputy chiefs as well. And then we look at the strategic plan and we, we go ahead and make our way with that, make sure we're all on the same page and moving in that direction. Uh, leadership right now is begins with me at the district level and uh, then I'll have that emanate down through the lieutenants and to the sergeants. The model I plan on using where I've had success 
with the Game Bureau and what I've learned about Chief White is certainly the community policing model. That'll take flattening out the organization at District 2, empowering the officers out in patrol in the cars to actually start attending community meetings, getting in touch with the uh, neighborhood groups, working with city council. Like I told them in my interview, you'll always see me at the meetings, but you need the people there that are actually doing the work. And I really like to see that start to filter throughout the department. I think it's a lost art. There's a difference between saying we practice community policing and actually practicing community policing. And I think over the next 90 days, you're going to see that change take place at District 2. I've already set some things in motion with some of the detail officers. They're going to accompany me for a day and uh, really start to look at becoming a professional law enforcement officer in the community policing model, which is uh, something that I really believe in and it's worked well for me over the last 30 years. The actual precinct officer, if you actually have a uh, uh, sit-down dialogue with Chief White, is exactly right. The precinct officer, 24 hours a day, is the chief of police of that precinct. And they have to be in touch with the community, they have to understand the problems, and they have to be able to come with problem solving and critical thinking, <coughs> excuse me, to address those issues for the community. Then I have to rely on them and the sergeants to get that information back to me. My tools are simply this, I have to have a toolbox full of items to give them to do their job and do it right. And that's what I plan on doing.